through 17, is what we're going to be reading today, and we're talking about continuing in our uh, Jesus I Never New series uh, today, we're going to be talking about Jesus is a healer. So, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 17, and before we uh, go any further, uh, I'll, I'll, I always call her uh, mom's, Michael's mom, so, uh, so I, I guess I don't know if I should refer to that, or I'd rather be bride. But, uh, but just when we were in worship, I really felt like um, God was wanting me to tell you that that uh, in regards to you know what you're doing, the teaching, and all that type of stuff, is that there's a miracle inside of your classroom. You know, uh, and, and then I kind of looked looked over at the actor and I saw you you were in you were in the worship this morning. And I was like, oh, I better say that because I think that might be something from you know. So, but there was a miracle. In your classroom, you know. Uh, so help me. Why don't we stretch out our hand and let us just pray over our dear Father in heaven? We lift her up to you today, Lord. And Father, we are believing and, and just a grim and agreement in regards to that word, Lord, from you, Lord. That there was a miracle yes. in that classroom. Yes. Yes. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would give her strength. I pray that you would give her. I pray that you would give her wisdom that in spite of the situation, Lord, where others are saying that it's impossible, God, we know that all things are possible with you. And Father, I pray, Lord, as, as she goes into that room, Lord, I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would accompany her. And Father, I pray that as she speaks life into that generation, as she speaks life into those young men and those young women, Lord, I pray, Father, that we thank you, Lord, in advance that the miracle is in that room. Yes. And Father, we just say thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So if, if you've got that, uh, we, let, let's go ahead and read it. It says, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 through 17. It says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mo mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. Verse 16 says, When evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him. He drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up their infirmities and bore our sins. Let's pray. Dear Father, have we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this word, and we pray, Father, that you would use this word to sharpen us, to, to make us better, to take us to places where you want us to go. And God, I just pray over it, Lord. Bless my lips, and, and let's just let's just pray that your Holy Spirit would be here in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You, you, know, you know, as I think about a, a verse, you know, like this, uh, and in a sense where, where we see Jesus actually being an avenue by which that people's lives are transformed. It gets me really thinking about the fact that, that when Jesus talks about this idea about that we should go out and we should do greater things, or when he talks about you know all the authority that was given to me is now given to you, or even when I read scriptures, you know, like, I am the vine, and as you're connected to me, you, are, you do receive life. It kind of gets me thinking, okay, if Jesus, while he was here on the earth, was actually going out and performing these type of miracles, like walking into a house and the, the lady of the house is laying in the bed with a fever. He goes and touches her. She gets up and all of a sudden she begins to serve, serve whatever it is that they were eating that evening. Later on in that evening, you know, people that are demon possessed are brought to the house. And he heals them. And people that are sick are brought to this house and he heals them. It gets me thinking about and even wanting to see miracles take place in my own personal life. Mm. And not only in my own personal life, but in the lives of other people yes. that I come in contact with. Yes. You know, I remember when, when I was, uh, I think it was like my junior and senior year in, 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 in high school, you know, God really got a hold of me. I mean, he got a hold of me like in a way that I didn't even know was was possible. Like I was, you know, I was raised in, in, in a, uh, a charismatic Baptist church. So that's oxymoron within itself, but that's what it was. It was a charismatic Baptist church. Before there was Paul Morton and full gospel, before it was all that, you know, we, we went to a church in the Hayes Valley in San Francisco that my great-grandfather was the senior pastor of. And in that, in that church, he had had an encounter with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
and brought that into his church. And so you can realize it was kind of at times it was a little bit rough. Like he would be up there preaching one day about the fruits of the spirit. The next Sunday, one of, you know, some of the elected officials was, would come and they would preach against it. You know, it was just it was chaotic at, at times. But my grandfather and my grandmother never really backed down from this idea that God was still active in our world today. And so I grew up inside of that environment. I grew up, but I was a person who like, you know, we didn't have children's church, so it was like we were inside the church. So like I would sleep on that front row, you know, like I'd be like my couch. It was like I was just knocked out sleep, drooling everything, you know. we we'll wake up, go to sleep, and in the middle of the service, but I'd be up at the front, I would know what the scripture was, then I would, you know, an hour later, two hours later, then, then, then I would all of a sudden be up again once it was time to do altar call and praying with people and all that stuff. But I slept on the front row. But so I had always been inside that environment, but had never myself experienced it. Until I got to my junior senior year and in high school, and all of a sudden, you know, just because of some relationship type of things that were going on inside of my life, you know, I really felt like, man, I need to reach out to God inside of this moment. And so I remember, you know, I would spend like, I was at least an hour plus, you know, inside of, you know, the, inside of what my room is. It, it, it was almost probably about as big as the stage. and kind of just like going back and forth, just praying and praying and praying. And I remember that I used to go and I used to like read like the book of Acts. Like, I don't know if you've ever read the book of Acts. When you read the book of Acts, you see things that, that are kind of like, you're like, oh my goodness, is that really the Bible? Is this the Bible I'm reading or is this a sci-fi channel? You know, what, what am I reading right now? And I just began to get inspired. I began to, you know, all of a sudden pray prayers like, God, I want to see that inside of my world. I want to see people, you know, that are blind. I want to see them see. I want to see people who are having trouble walking, that, that, that you just used me, that I pray over them. And all of a sudden they stand up and they're able to walk, they're able to jump. You know, someone rolling up their mat and just the way that they used to live their life. You know, God, I want to see that. Yes. You know, and, 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 and I believe that as Christians, I believe that as people who, who, who are called and anointed by God and have that authority, is that we should have a desire for those type of things. Yes. Desire to see those things inside of our world. And you might be looking at me and being like, man, that's just weird. That, that, I, I, I don't know what I walked into today, but I just want to show you through scripture, especially through this verse, that Jesus was a healer, and because he was a healer, we're called to be healed. Right, right. You know, it, it's, you know I, I, I put together a list of uh, just some of the things that, that I've seen God do, you know, and, and some of these have been where, you know, I can, you know, you know, kind of have a little bit of part of it because I prayed for the person. Other of these things, just I've been in a service like this, and then some, some of them have just been, you know, I just have been in the prayer circle when something took place. But but these are some of the things that I've seen God do. I've seen God heal a 16-year-old girl whose vital signs said she was done, and at the end of the prayer, they, she wasn't done. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen God heal a mother whose, whose doctor said she, she wouldn't wake up from a coma. And guess what? After we prayed, she woke up. You know, I've seen God heal people of migraines. People who, 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 who just, you know, like, I don't know if you know someone that's dealing with migraines, or maybe you are yourself. You're like, man, it's, 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 it's horrific. Like, you see them all of a sudden, their, their character changes, their, their, their face changes because they can't cope and they came and they be inside of around other people because their head hurts so bad. And I've seen people that have struggled with migraines for years and come into a service, and all of a sudden, when they left, a whole different perspective. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus is a healer. I've seen, you know, my, my own personal grandmother who just actually just went through this whole bout with cancer. Is that, yes, she's on dialysis, so, you know, I think it's 10, 10 hours during the day. At nighttime, she kind of comes up to the machine at her house, but she's still alive. She's still thriving. She's still going out. Sometimes we're calling her, we're like, where are you at? She's like, oh, I'm in the city having sushi. You know, I'm like, oh, get home, girl. You know, you know, you know just like, well, because God is a healer. You know, I, things to, to God. We, we had two ladies inside of our church who actually both were battling um, cancer. One of them went to go be with the Lord about a year ago, but she they had given her a diagnosis, and, you know, the whole I think of saying that you won't last longer than a few months, and 10 years later, you have taken her to right now where, where they've given her at times days to live. Yeah. They, they, they have sent her home and said, just go pack your bags. Just, just, just go on and prepare everything that you need to prepare. And, and guess what? You you won't last to the end of the week. And guess what? She has seen her daughter graduate from high school. She's seen her daughter get put into college. Yeah. She, has, she has other two other kids who, who 
or in elementary school who she's believing that God is going to prolong her life. Yes. And it's inside of those moments when you see this type of stuff, it brings the gospel from just being on these pages, just being inside yeah. of a book, and that yeah. brings it alive. And you're like, man, if Jesus did it for them, yeah. I know right. Jesus can do it for them. with migraines. I've seen God heal uh, people of back pains. I've seen God heal a, a wound. Just, just, just very recently, I, you know, I was talking to my wife about, about three months ago, and a girl who we had been praying for for three straight years just gave birth to their first baby boy. Amen. How cool is that? You, you know, it's God heals throats. I've just seen people come in and, and, you know, they're talking all funny because they have a throat issue. Something that they've dealt with for years. And all of a sudden, in the environment, God begins to touch them and Jesus heals them. Yeah. I said, another thing is, is, is that I've seen God remove tumors. Mm. Like, 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 literally, I have seen in an environment where a person has gone to the doctor that same week, has come into the house of God, we laid hands on them, and as we laid hands on them, something began to happen. Maybe, maybe we didn't see it all. Maybe all we saw was just the emotional element of what's happening as they're in the environment, them crying or them grabbing, you know, but then they go to the doctors a week or two weeks later, and it's completely gone. Yeah. You know, you know, I've you know, I've seen God heal sickness. I've seen pe people who had small issues. I've seen people that had huge issues, and as we prayed for them, as we laid our hands on them, that they began to receive healing. I've seen God heal eyesight. I've seen people who've entered into services with a blur, like just they just natural blur. Just there's something there that 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 has prevented them from seeing 2020 or seeing clearly. And at the end of the service, they're able to see. Yes. You know, and the reason why I'm starting off with this is, is because just like any type of environment, that what happens is, is the moment that you begin to hear, oh, they did it, oh, I know I can do it. You know, like, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if, if, and, and, and this might be a bad example, but, it, but it's like the whole deal, like, with the lotto. You know, if, if they just went on and just said, oh, well, you know, yeah, someday someone's going to win, and you've never heard of an example of somebody winning, you'd be like, oh, I'm not playing now. Oh, I'm not going there. I'm not spending my dollar. But why do people want to spend their dollar? Because right after somebody wins, they put it on TV. Why? Because they want you to know somebody wins, so go spend some more money. Yeah. You know, and it's the same thing in the sense of our faith that as we see this, not only do we see it in the Bible, where sometimes we feel so distant from us, but even Jesus is even doing it even right now. Every single one of these examples that I've given you is no older than a year old. You know, even as I was sitting here and trying to think about, okay, what kind of examples can I think of? I'm just like, man, I, I'm just like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember, oh, I remember when God, yeah, God is able. Yeah. Jesus is a healer. Yeah. That he's able to enter into our situations. And as he enters into our situations, change is possible. Amen. Yeah. That, that there's things that medically maybe cannot be explained. Maybe there's things that we ourselves don't have all the answers to. And I don't have all the answers. All I'm saying is the fact that as we add Jesus to the equation, it equals a miracle. Yes. That as Jesus comes inside of our lives and as we interact with other people, I'm just saying that hey, it's, 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 it's the thing of like all by themselves. You know, it's like people try to live and they try to do the things that they do. And some people make it, some people don't. But what I'm saying is the fact that when you add Jesus, the equation is we're going to make it. We're going to make it through this. We're going to receive the breakthrough. Something supernatural is going to happen. And I'm not just talking about us saying, well, yeah, you're right, Teddy. You know, you know, one day we all will receive healing because when we get to heaven. No, I'm talking about for now. Right. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth yes. as it is in heaven. And yeah, I've been on that, 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 that road where I pray for people. I've been on that road where, where literally I'm praying for somebody. I'm asking for somebody. I'm praying some more for them and nothing happens. But guess what? I've seen God move enough time that it sustains me in the time when I don't see nothing. To still believe, to still have faith, to still be reaching out, to still make the sacrifice, to still keep doing the things that I'm believing that God is going to do. So some observations from the text. 
From one of the observations that Jesus heals Mary with a fever, Peter's mother-in-law. I don't know if her cooking was extremely good. I don't know what the reason why Jesus just kind of enters in, touches her, touches her on the hand, and then all of a sudden she gets up. She, she, she's fine. But a great observation to make right there is once you proceed your healing, your next posture should be a posture of serving. Yes. Is that the moment that you've been touched by Jesus, your posture should be a thing of, well, now let, let me figure out how I can serve Jesus. What is the, 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 the best thing for me to do? And really, honestly, if, if this was my mother-in-law, it would be her making some enchiladas. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, you know, it just, she can just be putting all that sauce, doing all the little things, hooking it up, you know, having the, the uh, stew, which may like, like a little stew, that, what's, what's it called, the meat, what's the meat? Oh my wife, she's she might not working with me today. But here we go. So when she does, you know, you know, you know, she she puts it in the crock pot, you know, so it sits there. You know, so like by the time she gets to the meat, she makes a roast. By the time she gets to the meat, it's like oh, she just kind of just rips it off with you know a little fork, you know, it's kind of uh, you know, so it's real tender, it's real nice. And all of a sudden, you know, she gets that tortilla that she just handmade, and and, and it's it, 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 it's not snow box. It's not one of the things you go buy and they all lay it packed up. No, no, no. It, 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 it's it's freshly made. She she done rolled it, touched it with her hand. You know, when people touch stuff in the kitchen with their hands, that's how you know they're a good cook. Glove, give it all. You got a glove, you got to touch it. You know, you got to. Like, my wife always tells me, like, when I'm making something, she's always like, why you got to touch everything? I said, because I'm a cook. I like, I like to just touch it. You know? But, but, but it's in, in, in that moment where Jesus comes in, touches her, she moves from just having a fever to have to being healed. And in that healed state, she begins to serve. She begins to do the things that, that is needed for her to do inside of this picture, inside of this scene. The other thing that we notice is that it says when evening comes. So this was after they had already eaten. It says that many people brought those that were demon possessed. And then they also brought all of the sick. This lets us know that there's a timing, there's a season, that there's a moment when Jesus is there inside of the house, what are you doing? When Jesus is there inside of the moment, are you caught up in the sense of, well, what can I get out of this? Or are you caught up in the scene of saying, who can I bring to be in this environment? Who needs to be here right now so that their life can be transformed? Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's really thinking past just, well, I've got mine and I'm all good and I'm all great. But it's moving to the place of saying, you know what? I've got mine. I'm doing great. How can I serve? But yet also, who can I bring to Jesus? Whose life can be transformed? Who else needs to walk and talk and, and have this transformation like I have right now? You know, who needs this? Who needs this? And I think it's a great question for us always to be asking ourselves, who else needs to know? Yes. yes, yes. Who else needs to know that Jesus mm. is a healer? Yeah. You know, th th there is this th there is this amazing scene where Jesus has and and, and, and he, he he's, he's walking and and he's got his people behind him and 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 all of a sudden there there, there appears a. It, 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 it appears a, I, you know, I'm trying to think of two different stories where Jesus does this, but I'm trying to think of the right story. So it, what Jesus does is, is he sees this crowd, and, and all of a sudden out of the crowd appears this man. And what this man does is this man says, you know, Jesus, can you help me? And he begins to talk about his son. He talks about his son who's demon-possessed. His son at times throws himself into fire and harms himself. And he talks about a father that, you know, has had to deal with these issues all of his life and all the grown life of even his child. Maybe it was five years. Maybe it was ten years. Maybe it was twenty. I don't know. But the Bible really doesn't tell us. But it tells us that it's his son. So for a period of time, he's had to deal with the issue of his son's issues. And then all of a sudden, from the crowd emerges this son. And Jesus begins to speak life into the son, and the son begins, be, the, the demons begin to leave, and he receives his healing. Now, when you first look at that picture, you, or you first read it, your first thing is like, even the, the title even says it, the healing of a, uh, of a demon-possessed son. I think that, that's the title that's inside of our Bible or whatever. But I want you to know that that's not really who received all of the healing. The son received healing, yes, because the demons were gone. But so did a hurting father. 
So did a father who was caring for the weight and, 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 and the load of a son who couldn't care for himself. Yeah. So we don't just see a healing of a son. We see the healing of a family. Yeah. We see a family that maybe comes back together. We see a family where lines of communication begin yeah. to be built. We see a family where the hurts and the pain of what they have been going through, the things that cry as they, they went to sleep, they cried about. Those things, all of a sudden, they receive the answer for them. They receive the healing that is needed. But yet there's another group that receives their healing, and it's the crowd. Because I'm telling you right now, any kid with major issues, and when I even talk about demon-possessed issues, not only affects that family unit, not only being carried by them, but it's being carried by a community. And so you need to understand that when we get to the place where we bring people to Jesus, we're not only advocating the change and the healing that is able to take place in one person's life, but we are advocating for the change that can happen inside of a family. We're advocating for promoting the change that can happen inside of a community. That's right. That's right. Yes. And so that day, like, it begins to go, like, oh my goodness, it's not just one healing, it's a community yeah. receiving their healing. that acknowledges the fact that Jesus is a healer. You know, it's, 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 it's so cool because I think one of the first times I ever read that and got, you know, the Holy Spirit kind of gave me kind of like the revelation of seeing that. You know, I began to say, okay, well, let me try to see that in light of what's going on in front of me. And, and, I'm, and I'm telling you right, right now, I've seen it over and over and over and over again. You know, that there are young people that are out there that they don't know Jesus. And literally, maybe you're a young person and you're in high school, middle school, or maybe you are in college. I want you to know that your impact can be the greatest. Why? Because every single day you go onto a mission field. You are inside of a class with 20, 30 other people. But guess what? They've got to be next to you. Yeah. So your conversation can change them. And can, your conversation can introduce them to Jesus. And, and you know what? Sometimes what happens is our society tries to push you down and say that you don't have a voice, that you can't do nothing. And I'm here to let you know that you can bring change. That you are an avenue of change. That you are great. Your better days, you know, it's not about what's going to happen too much, but it's more about what you're doing right now yeah. that will have an impact yeah. on your society. This week, you know, you know, I was telling you, Genesis, 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 well, I don't know, let me do that. Well, I started something really, really excited. <laughs> but I was telling Genesis, my wife, uh, this, this week, you know, this, this week we, um, you know, you know, you know, Mike had, you know, you know, some of the Ferguson young people here, you know, and, 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 and you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting for me because I'm, you know, I'm from here, but I lived in Virginia for 10 years, okay, so the point of view that we, Kind of have sometimes, and some of the people who like in like sense of, who are like Facebook friends and sort of the, the thinking patterns a little bit different, you know, um, than 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 what you know I've come to kind of grab a hold of kind of here, and and so you, you know so I was listening to some comments you know on on, on Facebook right, and and, and, and and you know this part is kind of like yeah, these people that why do they think the way they think this is just weird you know but this part they kind of just like okay I can see what you know why they have a point of view and all that sort of stuff. And so all, all that kind of stuff. But you know, you know, but that was on Wednesday night. When Wednesday night we had our LTI meeting and um and some of the guys came in, you know, and, um, some of some of the young folks from Ferguson were, were here. And so I didn't get a chance to like sit down and have a deep conversation with them. But what happened was is I began, you know, just shook one person's hand, shook another person's hand, and I had another like kind of um, interaction with them. And 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 when that happened, there was something inside of me that basically was like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. I understand what the media is saying. I understand the point of view of all this, but once you interacted with somebody, mm -hmm. once you have encountered somebody, mm -hmm. once you had a physical contact with somebody, your perspective changes. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't that I had a bad perspective about them, because I didn't think anything about them that was, was, was bad, but it took my perspective to a brand new level. Yeah. And it wasn't, they didn't say anything you know, profound, you know, they didn't write about, you know, what they were doing and how they're doing it, but just when you begin to get physically in contact with somebody, yes, sir. it all of a sudden not only changes them, it changes you. Amen. 
And see, and that's what I'm talking about is the idea that when Jesus entered into this home, it changed the perspective of what this lady was seeing. Maybe her fever and her head was hurting so bad that she couldn't even open her eyes. But all of a sudden, Jesus appears. And guess what? She can get up and she can cook and she can serve and she can do all the things that she couldn't do before. Why? Because she came in contact with Jesus. Because in this text, and Matthew is wanting his audience, his readers, to know that Jesus was and he is a healer. Jesus' healing was a sign of him being the Messiah, which is that's why we get the quote from Isaiah. You know, is that it's a sign and pointing to the fact that he is the Messiah. But here go four points in regards to this text and talking about Jesus is the healer. The first thing is that healing is for today. That's the whole reason why I listed all those things in which I've seen. Jesus do. It wasn't me. It wasn't me praying a special prayer. It wasn't me, you know, trying, but it was Jesus coming into the equation. I remember, uh, you know, j just even this week, we got some really good news of, of, about my middle daughter. Um, actually about, it actually, the, the, the whole thing started maybe about, um, about a month before we, or maybe two months before we moved out here. So it was during the holidays last year. We, um, you know, my, my daughter, we, you know, I would fall asleep, you know, my wife would be asleep, and all of a sudden we would just hear like a yell, like, 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 like a screech. And so I would run, you know, run into my daughter's room and try to see what the deal, you know, what it was. And, and, and it would just be like her, and she'd be like in this zombie type of state. She'd be like, eh, eh, eh. she'd be crying about something that, like, was off the wall. Like, no, so we would wake her up. We'd be like, hey, wake, wake up, wake, wake up. And we'd wake, 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 finally get her up. And we would calm her down, hold her, and put her right back to sleep. We would ask her about the next morning. And she'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And, and what, what was going on, and we found out to the doctor, was she was having what they call um, sleep frights, or sleep, sleep apnea is the whole thing, but they're called sleep frights or whatever, sleep frights. Tears, sleep tears, night tears, there you go. It's, and, 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 and so what it is, it's like when your body is deprived of sleep, when you finally do go to sleep, it's almost like you go into like this, like, uh, uh, for lack of words, almost like a coma state. And then things begin to happen. You, you all, you're dreaming about something, and it becomes almost like it becomes like super real inside your mind because your mind can't hold the capacity because you're not getting enough sleep, okay? So we thought, okay, cool. She just needs to get more sleep. We've got to put her down for naps. You know, this time she will take a nap. Like, you'll take naps now, girl. You know, waking me up, maybe not screaming like that. You know, and, and so. And, 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 and so we said, okay, we'll put you down to sleep. You, 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 you go to sleep. And, 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 and so we, everything's fine. We kind of get out here. I think she did it like one time. By the time we moved out here, so about three months, past I did it maybe like once every two weeks. And so we're thinking, okay, cool. We need to you know, nail down more what the pattern is. Finally, when we get out here, we're like, okay, we feel like she's, she's moved past it. She wakes up one night and does it again. And we're just kind of like, okay, there's, there's something wrong here. Let's go to the doctor again. So we go to the doctor, we get out here, and the doctor diagnoses us, yes, that's the case, but you also need to watch out for this. She has this mass that is inside of her throat that is preventing her from breathing right. And so at that point, we're kind of like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? And so they, so what they do is they give her some medicine, but we're just bleeding, you know, and they tell her she's going to have to have surgery or something like that. And we're just kind of like, no, we don't want her to have surgery. You know, we don't want to have to go down that whole road. And then, you know, so, so she's, I think it's been like two months or three months since, since she's been to the doctor. She went back for a, a reevaluation this past week, and the doctor said it's, it's about that big. It's small. What we did was we came to a place where we were like, God, we can't control this. Mm -hmm. come on, come God, on. we need you to come in and yeah. step in the yeah. middle of this. God, yeah. we need you inside of this moment. We can't go inside of our hand and try to, you know, my mouth and pull it out, you know, but we need you. And even the doctor was shocked that he began to get like a little smart mouth with my wife. And, and, and it was like, what did he say? He said, you're not going to help me out at all. See, she's not going to help me out at all. <laughs> She got a little smart out with him and said, no, it's, it's going to be gone completely. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's not inside those moments where, where, where I believe that we just have to understand that Jesus yes. is yes. a yes. healer. Yes. You know, number two is that it's always a good time to heal. You know, Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's, sometimes it's not about when you're ready. It's about when the opportunity is ready. Amen. 
You know, and as I did this, this picture, we, we get, we get, you know, Jesus is there, he's hanging out at the house at the end of the night, you know, when the evening had come. When the evening had come, that's the time when I'm ready to go to bed. Not the evening time that time when I want to invite people over to my house. Hey, you want to come over at 10 o'clock? Hey, great, come on, meet you there at my house. You know, that's just not, you know, most of us wouldn't be inclined to, to do that. You know, but inside of this moment, what we see is that Jesus, at, at the, I mean, the evening had come. Yes. All of a sudden, the house begins to get full. And then we're not talking about with folks that come out, my, you know, my uh, mail is a little bit, you know, my stuff, Jesus, can you yell? No, we're talking about, it says, people that were demon-possessed. I don't know about y'all, but that makes me feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, I got three girls, you know, I got, I got my wife. I, I don't want a little bit coming over my house, a little bit, you know, but, but it, it says that, that those type of people came to the house. Yeah. It says people that were sick. It says people may, may, I don't know what sick looks like, but I know a lot of times when I get sick, it ain't pretty. And so we're talking about people starting to come in over the house and Jesus, instead of saying, oh, well, you know what, come back tomorrow morning. Yes. He said, you know what, come over here. Come on, let, let, let's pray over this. You know, and, and it even says, says at one point, it says that, it says when Jesus, when it said, when evening come in, when he was possessed, brought, were brought to him, he drove out the spirits where they were. You know what, I, I'm thinking to myself, I want to know what that word is. This is a word. A word. So that's one side. But number three. It says, if you never pray, you'll never see a healing. Yes. You know, one thing that my dad never told me was that a closed mouth is never fed. Mm-hmm. And it's the thing is, is, is that we can be at a point where we're saying, well, you know, that's someone else's responsibility. Well, I want to see healing. I want to do this. I want to do that. But when's the last time you stepped out in faith yes. and actually practiced it? Because the thing about it is if you pray for, I'm telling you right now, if, if you don't pray for people 100% of the time, guess what? You'll 100% of the time never see a miracle. Yeah. But if you pray for people 100% of the time, I don't know what that percentage is going to be, but I'm telling you it's going to be larger than zero. Right, right. You know, and the thing is, is that I think we just need to step out in faith. And you hear somebody cough and stuff just looking at it like, hey, you know what? You know, all that stuff. Wearing a mask and stuff. We do say, hey, you know what? In Jesus' name. Yeah. Because I'm telling you right now, then that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I think it was T.D. Jakes. He, he, he said being a Christian is like is like being a nurse in a hospital. Mm-hmm. You know, and he, he goes, you know, yeah, we put on the protection, which is the armor of God with the mask and all those stuff. <coughs> we should be dealing with sick people yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing is, is, is that... It's, you know, and even if you look throughout history, you know, you begin to see people, you know, people that took steps of faith. Like there, there's a lady in, in, in Africa who, who actually, they were ministering to the folks who had leprosy. And years went by and this lady never got leprosy. Why? Because of her faith. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm not telling you to step out there and do, you know, why well, I, I, I sort of am. Step out there and do crazy things. You know, but the thing is, is, is we take steps of faith. I believe that God meets us right where we're at. This is the last thing. It says, no need is too small or too big. It says, we need to understand that there's no need that is too small. And there is no need that is too big for God. You know, I told the first service is, is that I said, it's probably a bad analogy. But I said it anyway, I said, because it kind of gets into all of our minds. Especially for all of us that have seen the land. You guys know, know cartoon Aladdin? So yeah. You know, and, and, and you have the genie. You know, you guys got the genie who's, who's, who's blue. There's a blue. You know, and, you know, and, and he talks about the wee, 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 wee little things in there. And he talks about the massiveness of what he's able to do. What I'm telling you right now, if the genie can have that much power to cover what is small and what is massive, I know that our God can as well. Yeah. And actually, can do a better job at it. You, you know, so we're looking at the creator of the universe. The little thing, like, like I don't know what you, but I watch, you know, I'm like a sci fi guy sometimes where I watch, like, the science channel. And I start t- listening to how they talk about our planet, how they talk about the universe, and my head just starts hurting. You know, because it's just like, it's so complex. You know, it's, 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 it's such a degree of this or whatever. It would be freezing cold. If we were like a degree off, it would be freezing cold on the earth and we wouldn't be able to live here. The degree over here would be too hot. We wouldn't even be able to live here neither. But just the fact that we are able to survive, that we, in a sense, as we look at our lives, are a miracle. Yeah. 
As we look at our planet, it shows the magnificence of God. It shows how awesome he is. It shows how massively in control of things he can be. And so there is no issue. There is no sickness. There is no disease. There is nothing inside of this world. So that speaks to any little bitty virus or anything like that, too small or too big for God yeah. to bring a miracle. Yeah. Before, I, before I sit down, because my time is complete, is that I want to pray for, for two types of people. I, I, I want to pray, first, first of all, if you come in here today and you have a sickness, or you know someone that is close to you that is battling some type of sickness, I want to pray with you. I want, I want to pray with, with you. I'm not going to call you the front or nothing, but just right where you're at, just to lift up your hand high enough and long enough for me to see. And, and, and you know, some people are going to come around you. You know, I like, so if you've got someone who is raising their hand near you, just, just, just put your hand on their shoulder. Just put your hand on their shoulder. Just as a sign of agreement. Just yes. the fact of us coming together, us yes. standing and believing yes. that Jesus is a healer. Yes. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, you are a healer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that every single one of these people is healed in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that you would touch them from the top of their head all the way to the bottom of their feet, Lord. I pray that you right now, Father, against sickness. I, I come right now, Father, against cancer, Lord. And Father, I declare that cancer must shrivel up and die. It must secede to the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for the things that you're going to do in every single one of these people's lives, Lord. Father, for the healing that they're going to walk in. Father, where they couldn't run before, they're going to run. Lord, where they couldn't jump before, they're going to jump, Lord. Father, things that they thought that they would never be able to do, but ever again, Father, in Jesus' name, they shall do them. And so, Father, we lift up every single one of them to you. Father, and declare healing into their bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And then the, the next thing I want to pray for is I want to pray for boldness. You know, because as it takes in the sense it's a, not only that we receive our healing, but also as we carry Jesus around with us. Everywhere we go, you know, is the fact that we have the potential to bring change into people's lives. And 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 and, and, I, and I love to say we have the potential because at the end of the day, this isn't magic. At the end of the day, this isn't like a formula that I can say, okay, cool, you know, A, B, C, D. The, 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 this is just us sometimes just stepping out in faith. And as we step out in faith, what happens is, is that we look to Jesus to be the, the answer. We look to him to come into the situation and bring the change that is needed. And the reason why I make sure to say that is because I don't want you to think of, well, that's just a Benny Ginn thing. That's just, you know, Teddy, you can come over. I have you come and, and talk to, you, you know, my person, my friend who's sick. And No, 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 no. You carry this with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that Jesus is with you. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just about stepping out in faith and just being like, you know what? I'm not sure, but I'm just going to step out. And as I step out, I'm going to pray and believe that yeah. God is going to do something. Yeah. So the thing is, it takes boldness. Yeah. It, it takes confidence. You know, the Bible tells us that, that when it talks about the prayer of the early church, guess what they prayed for? Boldness. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they knew all the other junk they were going to have to deal with. They said, God, we just need boldness. Yeah. Boldness to stand up in our communities. Boldness to overcome persecution. People throwing stuff at us and wanting to kill us. God, give us boldness. Yeah. And then we don't back down. Yeah. And so we need boldness today. I just want you to lift up your hands as well. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you right now again. And Father, I lift up every single one of these people. Yes. And Father, I pray for boldness. Oh. Yes. I pray for a boldness that is beyond our understanding. I pray, Father, that, that, that as right, even right now, Lord, you would begin to stretch us outside of the mold of just saying, well, that's not me. Well, I'm not comfortable. Well, well, well God, you didn't make me that way. And because, guess what? Because he didn't make you that way, that's why right, right now it's important to pray for boldness. That in the middle of even right now, I pray, Father, right now that you would download into people. Give them the heart, Lord. Give them that heartbeat, Lord, that is after you. A heartbeat that, you know, wants to see people.
people healed, that wants to see people, wants to bring people into the kingdom. Wants to see people walk in the fullness of what you have for them, physically, emotionally, psychologically, Father. Lord, give us your boldness, Father. Give us boldness. God, in, in, in the middle of a politically correct world, God, help us to be a little bit of unpolitically correct, Father. Help us to speak life. Help us to speak words of encouragement. Yeah. Help us, Lord, where there is a gap. Help us to fill it, Lord. God, right now I come against, you, you know, any thought, Lord, of insecurity, of doubt, of fear. And, Lord, we just say, ask you, Lord, to come in and bring the boldness, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.